Welcome to Blackout TV, everybody. This is a new year, new life. So we're going on. Today we got a new guest. We got a new guest for you guys. So I want you guys to listen to this interview because it's gonna be a special one, man. So be ready. So before we start, I'm gonna let you do one thing. You see, click on that button, subscribe, like, comment, do whatever you wanna do. Because this one is gonna be a big one. So, so let's get started. We got a rapper, Norwegian rapper. His name is Flomo. So I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about him. Yes, sir. So Flomo, let's start. Let's start with the name Flomo. Welcome to Blackout first. Thank you, brother. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. Let's start with the name Flomo. Yeah. Man. What does the name mean? Flomo. It's actually a tribe name, bro. I come from a place called Liberia in West Africa, and uh, it's a tribe name. My tribe is Pele, and it's a really popular name in uh, my culture. And uh, most people would think it's like a, a made-up name, but it's actually my middle name. So yeah. Pele. Yeah. It's you know what's? Who, do you know who Pele is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, know who so, Pele is, yeah? Yeah, he's a footballer. Yeah, yeah man, yeah, he's yeah. a legend of football. Man. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And football was not in your life, so. No, no, no. You, so you didn't, live, to... you didn't live with that name? No, not like that. But, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's just a tribe name I got from my father. Ah, so, nice. you know, I felt like it was the right name to choose as ah, an artist, you know. I want to keep it real and simple. Not big, big names and all that. Just keep it like me, you know. just want to show myself. Yeah, so yeah. since now you have to tell us about your name, mm -hmm. we want to know about your music, man. Okay. So just tell us a little bit about your music what do you what kind of music do you make yeah um like i started in english uh, mm -hmm. doing a lot of trap music rap hip-hop a little bit of stuff like that but in the in the end like beginning of 2020 i just switched it up man i met this new producer called rubber band big shout out to my big dog we know big stacko <laughs> So yeah, obviously, he wanted me to try something new and uh, I fuck with it, you know, Norwegian is a good language. I, I live here, obviously, and I felt like it was a better connection with the fans and the people around me to understand more of where I was getting. But at the same time, you know, I didn't want it to do like pure Norwegian, like rock or something like that. No. You get me? <laughs> I'm still a rapper, yeah, obviously, and I still got black blood, you know, so I wanted to mix that. Afro beat and you know that rhythm, the dancing, the good vibes. Cause I'm just trying to you know show who I am and obviously I'm a good vibe. Yeah. So, so into your music, you mm. said that it's a lot of energy, Afro beat. Yeah. And uh, so you you trying to put Norwegian in, in in your music? Yeah, I'm trying to put like Afro beat in the Norwegian market. So I'm trying to do uh, Afro beat in Norwegian and just you know flow with that like my type of way. You know I, I don't want to be like somebody else. I just want to do me so when they see or hear me then they will understand yo this is flow mode. you know i just try to be like a little bit different but you you said uh, you just recently say that you have a relationship like friendly relationship with rubber band can mm. you tell us anything about him like who what kind of relation do you guys have yeah man, that's my big brother right there man he's he's the real goat man like for everybody who want to do music you need to hook up my bro man like he got everything studio he's persistent and um he's really like patient in the studio he loves to do good shit and yeah man i could um how, how can i say it in uh, in a good way like i want to hire this guy forever you get me <laughs> do you guys have uh, like no have you guys known each other for long how long have you guys known him funny story about that um I've known him, like, known him since 2020 when we met in the studio. Yeah. But uh, before that, he was actually the first uh, guy who gave me my first shot at a concert. He was, used to be an artist before by the name Lars Rubix. And um, he had a show in my city, San Vico, where I'm from, with uh, the old Arif. And back then, he used to call himself Filthy Rich. And they had, like, a gig, and uh, me and my crew was the warm-up. So the first time I was ever on the stage was thanks to Rubber Band. As he called himself now. So do you, are you planning to just make music with him or are you going to collaborate with other producers? It's always other. Yeah, that's true, bro. Like, I, I don't mind collaborating with people as long as the vibe is good. Um, but it's not like I'm out there looking for people to work with right now because I'm happy where I am. 
Uh, we, we work good together, you know, we write together, we record together, and we chill together, man. We're like, we like brothers, you know, so it's a good vibe, and I'm all about that. It's more for me, like, how to make the music and just to give the music out. It's the processing, it, the fun behind it, and everything we do in studio, and, you know, sometimes just call each other and say, yo, what's up, bro, you know, just like that, man. So for now, I'm chilling with my broski, and uh, I'm always down to work with people. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. Mm, that's nice, that's nice. We could see that because yeah. more all of the songs that he has probably he has produced is the Mamacita, mm -hmm. uh, Active, and uh, uh, we have Chop Money. So le let's start with Mamacita. Yeah, bro. Can you tell us a little bit of Mamacita? Yeah, like what do you want to know? Like the story behind yeah, yeah, it or how we made yeah, it? Yeah, because you know, I, okay, let, let's start a little bit with uh, what does, why Mamacita, why the name Mamacita? Is it like, is it, what do you mean? Like, I know what Mamacita means, but yeah, yeah. what did you decide to name your song Mamacita? Bro, like, I'm a big fan of Latin women again. You know, like, I love the language, I love the way they are, you know, the attitude, the everything they got. And uh, Mamacita came out because. I actually tried that out uh, when I was in the club and stuff. I was like, hey, let me see the, when, I, when I get your number, you snap, you know? I want you to be my late snack. <laughs> and she started laughing. And, you know, oh. just, we, had, we had a conversation after that. And, you know, I was like, you know, like shit. I had a home studio at that time. I went home, I just, you know, explored the mic with what I've been seeing that day. And, you know, good vibes. So, yeah. Honestly, I just what, like what is it about the song? Like, for those who have not listened, it's mm -hmm. out there on YouTube. Spotify, so you can go and listen to it. So just tell the people, the new people who are going to listen to this, yeah. what is it about? Uh, Mama Sita is honestly one of my favorite songs because it just makes me happy. It reminds me of summer, good vibes. And as I said earlier, I used to do trap, but you know, I want a new wave now. I just want to be positive and talk about sweet ladies and you know, the good things. You're the ladies man. I'm the ladies man. <laughs> So, yeah, for the gallon money, as, as I call myself too. So, mm. yeah. And we have Chop Money, Chop hey. Money. Yeah, so yeah. tell us about that because I know Chop Money, you gotta, you gotta have at least money, you cannot be spending. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so tell, tell, tell us about that song. Nah, Chop Money was um, actually a Joyce song. Uh, ah, Joyce um, is a exactly. friend, friend of mine, like a brother to me. He's also the cousin of my girlfriend. And uh, I met him at a family party, and we just uh, connected, you know, just talked about a lot of stuff. He's a friend also of my brother before we actually started hanging out. And he told me like, yo, bro, I got this beat, and we were at the beach, drinking beer, some Hennessy, and I was feeling that beat with the breeze and all that on me, you know, it's like, okay, okay, I'm feeling this. Mm -hmm. So I invited him up to Lush, um, as I said, a rubber band, but Lush. And then, you know, we just, we just found the tone, man. It was just good vibes. And it was not hard to work with him. It was easy. And he had the hook already. And he had an idea. So basically, I just laid a verse. And we just, we just rocked with it from there, you know. It was good vibes. Oh, that, it was a really good vibe. Yeah. It was a real one. And we was there, too. Because we yeah. the vibe. The vibe was nice, man. Food, we were there. Everything For the videos. video. <laughs> <laughs> we was playing around. That was like, wow. It was, so yeah, much, yeah. so much went to one for real, for real. Don't forget the water guns, man. Yeah, the water guns. Yeah. Like, it was funny, man. It was like that was like Norwegian <laughs> summer looking like we were not in Norway. We had <laughs> fun, man. That was cool, man. I, you, I'm active because active. I, I like the song active. I'm, mm. I have to say that because you know it has, it shows how you have worked hard, mm. how you you. It shows about your style life, you yeah, know. Yeah. So tell, just tell us anything about that. What do you say about the active song? Yeah, active is basically in the name, bro. I'm just trying to show uh, both new followers and old followers, like, yo, I'm grinding, man. I'm working. I don't got no time to, you know, chill. I want this. This is like this is what I've decided that I want, and I'm a, I'm gonna do it. But I can't be chilling, so I gotta be active. 
Mm. So I'm talking all about how hard I work in the studio. And, you know, like, I ain't got time to really sit down and try to make everybody happy and this and that. Because, you know, when, you, when you're looking for something, you don't really have the time to say, oh, bro, I have to meet you today. Or, yo, I got, I can, you know, you got to prioritize the time. Go studio, uh, learn new ways to market yourself and stuff, you know. Sometimes people will, will feel bad about that, but mm. in the end, you just gotta do what you gotta do, and that's why I'm saying like no, no new friends, man. I gotta keep it active, bro. Yeah. So it's, we certainly could see how how active you were, man. Yeah. And uh, you, have you been like, let let's talk about the performance. Have you been out the world like out of nowhere? Yeah, I've been, uh, but not like um, out of Scandinavia. Okay, mostly in, uh, in Scandinavia. Most, mostly in Scandinavia. What did you gain by going out there and trying? promote or sing your song how yeah. is it to to actually go out there you know to try and achieve the dream you know like bro it's kind of both mixed feelings you never know what you're gonna like, need you don't know how the crowd's gonna be you don't know yeah basically that's the most scary part you don't really know how the crowd's gonna be you just gotta you know have a good feeling it's gonna be like like was it a little scary? Because mm. I assume that was your first time going out of Norway to go and perform, right? Yeah, like I've been um, in Sweden a couple of times. I did oh, my man. first big show in Sweden. Big shout out to Homestar for that allowing me to perform on the stage. Um, but like my first time now in Denmark, it was last year, and uh, that was kind of a little bit scary because I don't, I didn't really know a lot about Denmark. I never actually been in Copenhagen. So it was kind of new for me, but I, I felt like home. You know, mm. people were really cool, a lot of good. You get me? I was, <laughs> I was good, bro. Like studio was vibing. Yeah, we had it all, bro. And thanks to the crowd, it made my, my fucking trip like amazing. I had a really good time. Mm. Yeah. And are you since now you have been working to these tracks that is really important and good and mm -hmm. because important when it comes to hard working through your music in an active song. Are you trying to make new songs now? Because we see now you have some new songs which is being released out. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about those songs now you are, you are going out with? Yeah, like, you, you, you mean the one we already talked about or the ones that Yeah, are we are talking about Stabil, I think, and the one that mm -hmm. is the, the new project that you are working on right now. Yeah, those are like, um, the, uh, they're part of the album. Uh, I'm coming with an album called Make Sense, actually, more than again. <laughs> so it's a joint album with me and my, me and my producer, Rubber Band. Um, and it's like, yeah, he's producing all the songs. And, uh, I'm putting uh, vocals on uh, all of them. We also got some featurings, I uh, got some lined up. I think Can you tell us which featuring was there? Like, to get people excited. <laughs> like, I got, I, got, I got a couple, but uh, for now, I think I just want to like, Keep the people excited for oh, it. You get me? Man. Sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to be excited to, you yeah, know, okay, okay. to so, figure it out for themselves who okay. is coming. But I can ensure you guys that mm. it's a good vibe. What is it about the album? The album is called Make Sense. And as simple as that, it makes sense to me. If it doesn't make sense for the person who's listening, then skip it. Oh! Yeah. oh, oh, oh. Punchline or punchline. Simple like that. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, like, yeah. when you, as an artist, you're trying to bring your art, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to show my side, like, my different sides, when I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm going through things. Like, we all working people, you know? Like, I got, I, sometimes I got problems with money. I got issues with my girl. I got issues with some friends. And I need to, like, bring that side of me to my art. And I want to show that to the world so they can get to know who I am, not just what they see. You understand? Mm. So that's why I'm trying to give this name make sense so they can understand that it makes sense for me and that all the feedback, of course, is positive and it's going to be negative. I don't mind. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. If it makes sense for you, then you should listen to the whole album. But if it doesn't make sense, I don't mind you skipping it. I respect the beginning. Mm. So I'm doing this like for me. You understand? It's more like for me to get out there and speak because when I'm on the microphone and making these songs, I'm... I'm kind of um, confessing, you understand? It's, it's not like I'm, I'm talking to the police or something. I'm confessing, I'm free. I'm speaking out loud how I want to speak. 
and it's up to the person listening to relate to that or not to relate to that. You understand? Mm. That's oh, yeah. that, that was some good. Yeah, that was like yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. So uh, let's not, let's talk a little more about you. We we are, we are. I want to know a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, if um, if you were not, let us say, a rapper, mm -hmm. what would you be? If I was not a rapper, I'm what sorry. what kind of thing would you do? Because yes, we know from as a rapper, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But let us say, like, if you didn't have this life, mm -hmm. bro, I started as a footballer, man. Really? Uh, oh yeah, yeah I, I wanted to be a, a footballer. I wanted to be the next Thierry Henry, not Pele. <laughs> Thierry Henry, <laughs> my fucking guy right yeah, there. That's amazing, though. Well, you know, it is what it is. So, wh when did you start making music? Like, what did you, And when did you start making... What What I mean is, like, mm. why and when? Because it gotta be a reason. It gotta be a reason why it's you made started yeah. making it. Um, Honestly, I just used to listen to a lot of music. Mm. The music used to give me energy. It gave me power. It gave me hope. It gave me everything, man. Like... Good music can make you feel all type of way. And when I used to listen to them before games, when I was um, in the changing room, like in the house time, I used to put the headset on while the coach was talking. And he respected that actually, because the music gave me that peace and of mind for me to concentrate when I needed it the most. So when I started in high school, I met a producer, a friend of mine hooked me up with, and he was making beats. And mm. then, you know, the interest of making my own song started sparkling because then I had something to go on. I had beats. All I needed to do was to put my mind into it and try to write write something. Yeah. yeah. So I started off like that and uh, and actually the one time, who, how old were you by that time? I was like sixteen man. Oh okay. mm, I was like sixteen. That's cool. So that was that was a really good time for me to start and uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, we had a lot of fun. Things were going on. We were we were a crew, you know. Uh, back in the days, we were called BNB Crew, and uh, yeah. Oh, BNB Crew. Yeah, man, it was <laughs> way back then. You know, what I mean? <laughs> but well, it was good vibes. It was that, good vibes. That's kind of cool, too, actually. And this question is kind of like I want to know mm -hmm. um, if if is a child who wants to buy a CD of you. Yeah. Let's let us assume that it's a child. Yeah. Uh, what will that person gain through listening to your music? What will that person feel? What the feeling will that person get? Yeah, honestly, it depends on the person, it depends on the kid. But mostly, if it's a kid, then I think the kid will gain uh, guidance. You know? Okay. Yeah, because everything I speak in my in my songs, they are true. It's mm. things I've been through, and uh, things I've seen with my eyes and experiences both the negative and the positive. So I'm trying to say, if, if a kid would listen, I hope he would take guidance from what I've done and maybe not do it or maybe do it. You oh, understand? nice, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And uh, in five years, let us say, if you imagine five years, yeah, bro. where do you want to be? In five years, I want to be standing on the biggest stage in Norway. Oh. I want to be... On the festival, festival. Cadet. <laughs> Cadet, <laughs> because Cadet, yeah. you are from Sweet. Uh, I mean, you are from um, what do you call this? Sun right? Yeah. And he's in there. So yeah. is, is that the dream project that you want to be at? To be honest, the only dream project that I really have is to fill a stadium with my own concert with my friends, okay. and the way we want to do things. But of course, don't get me wrong, to be on Cadet will be a dream as well. But yeah. when we're talking the biggest dream, mm. I want to do things like, okay, people are there to watch me and my friends. Because I think it's possible because the reason I'm saying it's possible, we have some artists who are not really that good are also still in Cadet. And mm. I feel like your music should be there. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah. So I feel like you, you should be up there with the other artists. Like... Like we have this artist called uh, Sherry. She's she's a really good artist. She's a good artist, but it seems like she also started from really low place, and then now she where she is right now. Mm -hmm. So it just how how you believe, how you go for it. Yeah, that's the thing, man. You just gotta take motivation from others who have made it, you know, and be positive. Mm, Everybody has has the time, you know. Do you think you can make it here, no? I really think so. I really yeah. believe so. Uh, has the Norwegian society helped you out to try and make it here? Some, some not, but 
That's it's always obstacles. Always obstacles everywhere you go. Mm. But I'm grateful for everything, both the bad and the good, because I'm learning out of it, you know, what to do and not to do for the next moves. So yeah, man. But I feel like it's possible. Mm. I like Norway. Uh, and the music industry is growing every yeah, day. Yeah, it was it's back growing. in the day it wasn't like this mm. now as it's going. Let us say who who is your best artist, you know, who would you choose to work with if you had a chance? Like, if I'm being honest, one of my favorite artists is called I C C. I C C I fuck with that guy, man. Ah. He he got his own personality and he reminds me of stuff I wanna do, you know, like type of Afro vibe but still keeping it real with himself. And you know, he's reflected guy, man. And uh, yeah, uh, I think that would be the guy I would want him to work with. And uh, what about the outside the country? Outside the country? The celebrities. Yeah, bro, man, I would go for my nigga Pass Aliu, bro. Big shout out to my G right there. You know? Really? Yeah. Ah. I like Pass Aliu, man. He's crazy, man. Pass Aliu with the back row G. I love this type of stuff to do, man. It's no, it's different, man. It's cultural. It's vibes, it's everything, man, you know, and they're just being themselves. And that's all I want to do. I just want to be myself and do my music. You know? Oh, cool. So who, who, let me ask you, who is your favorite artist? Me. Yeah. Yeah, me. Who, who is your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, I know what you mean, but like, who do you like get listening to the most? Like, I don't really listen to a lot of music, if I'm going to be honest. Oh. Um, I just created Spotify, like... Uh, Three weeks ago, actually, <laughs> to try to keep up with the Norwegian industry and what's coming out. But the reason I don't really listen to a lot of music is because I feel like it's really easy to get influenced by others' music. And mm. that's not the way I want to go. I want to do something like I only feel and comes out from me. I don't want to like have interest in getting something from I heard somewhere else, then I put it in my song, you know. I want you to be like, okay, when they hear Flomo, that's Flomo. So, and when they think about Flomo, they can say, nah, that nigga don't remind me of no other nigga. Nah, yeah, that's Flomo. That's what I want it to be, you get me? So I try to not listen to so much music, but of course, when I'm in the clubs and stuff, I listen to music, I enjoy music, mm -hmm. I love music, don't get me wrong, but I've just put myself into that thinking like, okay, focus on you. And of course, I listen to my friends' music, I support my friends. I'm always listening to my friends' music, giving feedbacks and whatever I need to do. Mm. But like for the big, big artists and stuff, it's really easy like to the like... The big one, yeah, the celebrities one. Like. It's really easy to kind of get... You can get inspired, but it's mm. also easy to just, you know, copy. Mm. So I try to not listen too much to music like that. You get me? Yeah, because if, if... The reason I asked this one, mm -hmm. because I wanted to see how you think if you had, for example, let's say Drake mm -hmm. in the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, how would... You, what would you how what would you say to him like directly yeah when it comes to music like one song with drake yeah like i would tell him directly i don't really fuck with drake honestly yeah. i would say bro the music kind of boring to me but you got hype let's work <laughs> seriously <laughs> <laughs> yeah man like it's business mm. of course yeah because he's a really big he's a really big like... artist i would love to work with him he he's he's done a lot mm. but like I don't really like enjoy so much of his music lately. Yeah. I used to like him when he was back with Lee Wayne. And stuff. Yeah, by that time he was yeah. rapping. Yeah, that he was, was cool. rapping by that time. That he was, was cool. he was really cool. Now he's more like you know, no more mu mu business music, but he's all right now. He's all oh, right. Wow. Shout out to Drake. He's doing good. He's a go. Yeah, I believe that. He's, and, uh, he's the one I who's controlling that. the music right yeah. now. Industry is so good. But like for me, Drake is not like the optimal goal that I would say, okay, mm. I'm all that gas to be mm. in the studio with. Of course, it would be an experience to learn because I'm all about learning. What would the first thing, what would you ask him? That one question. Mm -hmm. How do you make music that make people addictive to you? Oh, okay. Yeah, because That's it's like... a good question, actually. I don't feel like I have to listen to Drake. I don't feel like he's the best, but I have a lot of friends who's always about Drake, Drake, Drake. Right. How does he do that to make people fall in love with his music? Mm -hmm. You understand? And that's the key I need to unlock to understand how to make everybody kind of, oh, I like this. Yeah. You understand? I got you, I got you, yeah. man. Man, this is, this was a good one, man. We, we, <laughs> we have to say, we gotta cut this one. So we, first of all, we wanna say thank you for coming here, man. 
Come on, big shout Thank out. Thank you. And uh, you have any kind of message to your fans, your subscribers? You just say it out. And you have probably some of your, you're going to release yeah, the yeah. album soon. So you probably want to say anything about that for you. Yeah, man. First of all, big shout out to Black Out TV for the invitation. I love this, man. Keep on going. Um, shout out to my mom. Yeah. Shout out to Rubber Van. Shout out to my team for the GO. You get me? We are about this shit. And big shout out to everybody who's listening to my music. Streaming, following, I love you guys. One love, and uh, yeah, be sure you catch Make Sense when it's out. March 26th, album will be out, so now you know the date. Make sure you get it. Let's get it. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. Thank you for everything, guys. So remember to subscribe and like this video.